Ryan's opera in the house, that is for sure. But also some big noise for Orlando Samson out of Autos. Two local Southern California teams here for our jiu-jitsu and Autos jiu-jitsu for our black belt middleweight semifinal. Now tying in the seemingly unbeatable world champion, our reigning world champion, recently also had that crazy 30-minute match with Isaki Baez where he put on a passing clinic. He has looked consistently oh, nice unstoppable. But wow. as I say that, the unstoppable wow. <laughs> guy gets taken down by Rolando Sampson with that beautifully timed double leg. And he'll take top position. That's a way to start the match. Absolutely. And I don't know, it's hard to say whether Tynan was looking to play top or bottom in this match, but Orlando certainly wasn't going to give him the opportunity to choose. He wanted to be on top, timed that double leg so beautifully, had good position. His head was up, finished on top. But now we see Tynan wow. looking for a submission here. He had a bit of a look at him on the plata. Orlando looking to take the back. Rolando really likes using this uh, sort of double pull guard, like a uh, crab ride position, putting his shins in between you and the top player to try and counter the, the guard play. We're in single leg axe. Tynan controlling the far sleeve. Maybe look for him to pass it to his left hand and then try to clear that foot off of his hip to try to get a pass going. Orlando's got to be a little bit careful here with his left leg, almost in a reaping position, but instead uses that extension. He looked to have a sweep, Tyna had great balance on top, and now they both come up and facing each other in a neutral position on the feet yet again. See if Orlando's looking for another shot, he's in really good position. Seems like we have a battle for a double pull there, but it looked like the referees called it Tynan's pull rather than a double pull, so no score on the board here. Looking well, to steal that advantage. Yeah, that was smart by Rolando to try to match the double pull if he knew he wasn't going to get a takedown, but it wasn't quite fast enough. But now we see Tynan climbing up the shoulders. Now, this is a tough triangle to look at because Rolando kept his shoulders and his head buried down deep and now really committing to burying that head all the way underneath the leg. Now, oh, Tiny belt using, drag. Yeah, Tiny using the belt here. Look at that big grip on the pants to wow. bring the hips over of Rolando Sampson. Rolando looking to defend. Searching for the back now is Tiny Dolper. He has, he's lost his chest to back connection, but now he is in a better passing position than we've seen him in so far as he passes that back lapel through to staple Rolando's shoulder onto the mat. Tiny not in a good passing position. He's got chest to chest with the underhook. Tynan had a uh, little bit of a look at an underhook there on the left side, but with Rolando bringing that lapel through and holding on to that, it kind of negates the power of the underhook, at yeah. least when it's still shallow. Yeah. So it can be very tough to commit to, so Tynan opting to kind of back out of that underhook yeah. here and come into uh, a little bit more of a distance style of this pass until he can maybe free that lapel. Yeah. If you think about that last uh, half guard position they were in, that kind of deep knee cut position, the way Rolando got his left leg out to the far hip is so important because that's going to shut down that avenue of passing and mm -hmm. it's going to allow him to start to work to like a better guard position.
That was he too. Tynan's left leg, a little bit stuck with that that grip that Rolando has with his right hand. It was originally actually grabbing his own pants. But he may be reaching now for lapel. You just saw that lapel shoot down through there. His right hand was ready to catch it as it came through. Or it's the belt, excuse me, not the lapel. It looks like the fight is really for that, uh, that right side there. Tynan really trying to clear that foot off of his, his bicep, clear it off the hip, and start getting a pass chain going to that side. It's going to be really hard because Rolando has a really good control of uh, his left leg. Yeah, exactly. It's like the lasso de la Hiva, uh thing we were talking, or like the dilemma we were talking about earlier, because every time Tynan tries to clear things on that right side, his left leg is stuck, and so he's getting off balance mm -hmm. there. So it's difficult to commit all the way to the right because yeah. he's going to off balance himself with his left foot being stuck. Yeah. He can't base out. So really smart move by Rolando to keep that the left leg of Tynan tied up because it also reinforces how dangerous his left side can be. But as I say that, Tynan does now free that left leg control. Mm -hmm. And this is a better passing position for him than we've seen so far. But Orlando Bro getting seeming... that leg back across the hip. Yeah, wow, beautiful recovery there by Rolando. Might seem to play a squid guard on that side, pass the lapel to his left hand. Yeah, we see him, had his, he has his knees inside, then he brought his feet inside to be able to create just enough space to get a full recovery here. Now with the Lahiva on the right side. Again, we see a consistent theme of him, you know, really insisting on controlling Tynan's left leg. Diving into a bit, maybe of a deep half guard here, trying to reach under, get underneath the hips of Tynan Dalpra. Tynan's trying to pass the lapel behind Rose's head. That's going to be a lot of control if he can get that lapel behind the head. And notice how Tynan just, uh, he dips his right knee in like a sprawl almost. He kind of mm -hmm. dips it into the body mm -hmm. to free that grip. And then he posts it out now here like more of a kickstand style. Now this is very classic Tynan Dalpa. This is what we see so much from him. This really heavy smash, slow and controlled passing. He frees his leg in there and gets, three points. gets those three points. And again, one thing that we see from him a ton in this position, which makes him very dangerous, is he constantly pins that free arm with his shins. He traps it or he pins it and allows him to either work on the other arm or the neck or move straight into neon belly and mount. I think it just goes to show you how much of a fight for control this level of jiu-jitsu is. It's not so much the techniques you use. It's more the control leading up to it. Mm. They had a long fight from half guard there, vying for position, trying to get mobility, trying to get to the right side. And then as soon as he gets the control he wants, the, the rest of the technique kind of you know, works for you. Yeah, I mean, we're seven over seven minutes into this match, right? That was a long battle for half guard, like you were saying. And then once he got there, he knew exactly what grips he needed, he knew exactly where his hips needed to be. And it's kind of an avalanche starts to come into play when Tiny Dalpra starts to get some of these top positions. Beautiful Rondo recovery there, nice recovery. though. Very nice. Yeah, I'm really impressed by Orlando's uh, performance here at the World Championships. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this is his first world semifinal at the black belt level. Yeah. Yeah, Rolando had a, a long time off for uh, some injuries he was dealing with, and he's, he's working his way back and putting himself in there, keeping a positive attitude. Yeah, it's yeah, really, really nice to see him. He's definitely someone that all of our fans, all of our spectators, and all of our athletes, especially in the middleweight division, need to be watching out for because he came in, beat some big names. He's had a good showing now against Ty and Dolper. I mean, even though there's a 9-2 on the scoreboard, we've seen Rolando have some really good control, some really good transitions, and now some really good recovery again here at the end of the match. Not many people get their guard passed by Tynan Dalbra and make it out alive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good point. That's a so, good point. <laughs> so he's someone to watch out for. I mean, he's looking incredible this tournament. A little straight arm bar attempt there on that left arm or on that right arm of Tynan. One minute left in this match right now. Strategy-wise, you know, Tynan is in a very comfortable lead, but I've always seen him looking forward to continuing to finish a match when possible. 
With someone like Rolando, though, very dangerous. I mean, Rolando just had that little arm bar, that straight arm bar there, earned him an advantage. Mm, looked like it was almost turning into like a butterfly type scissor sweep. Yep. And created more of an opening and a more of an opportunity to actually play guard. Tynan was very comfortable there in the close guard. It forced Tynan to defend, to stand up. And now, even though there's short time, it gave Rolando a little bit of space to start working his attacks again. Last pass there from Tynan. First black belt world podium for Rolando Sampson. And yet again, we have our world champion, Tynan Dalbra, pushing through to the finals, looking to accomplish another gold medal. And still unstoppable, which is what we've been seeing. That's been the theme for quite a while now, last couple of years. Tyne and Galpra, dominant as ever here in the semifinals of the World Championships. Of course, we've got a big Tyne and Galpra crowd here. We see a, a sea of AOJ right there in front of Matt Two. into another world final. We have his opponent yet to be decided.